just for fun. And to give you an idea of how an author describes a book to an editor she hopes will buy it for publication, check out superstar bestseller Stella Cameron as she pitches her new Court of Angels series to HQN editor Margot Lipschultz. Stella and Margo, it's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Margo. I'm Stella Cameron. Very from nice Seattle. to meet you. Um, so tell me what you're pitching today, and I promise to make it as painless as possible. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I'm pitching uh, a series of paranormal books set in New Orleans in current times. Uh, the story begins 300 years ago in Brussels, uh, when um, a paranormal family first encounters a dark-haired, blue-eyed child of their own. And they're not supposed to be. They're all born with red hair and, and, and green eyes. And this begins a curse, or so they believe it begins a curse. Mm -hmm. oh. Forward quick, 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 to the, to the current time. There are three large paranormal families, uh, psychic families in New Orleans, who have, um, each member has their own specific, unusual power, in addition to being clairvoyant, psychic, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what they have encountered are a, a, a renegade clan called the Embran, who are shapeshifters, but they shapeshift into very unusual creatures. Mm -hmm. And their plan is to take over New Orleans. So it's actually a battle for New Orleans. For New Orleans. It's, it's a love, obviously a love story. Mm -hmm. um, the decisions that they make, they don't make them lightly as far as their relationships go, because there's no backing out. Mm -hmm. um, so in the, for instance, I have written the first book, Out of Body, and I'm now writing out of mind. Mm -hmm. And out of mind, the, the heroine uh, never ever wanted to be uh, a psychic. Mm -hmm. So she has fought against it. She, she actually runs a concierge business. And, uh, but fortunately or unfortunately, she can't fight against the, the power that she has anymore. So she's dragged right into the middle of these unusual deaths that are happening all over New Orleans. With, very clearly being perpetrated by people who are not human. Now, is she aware that she's from one of the families oh, of yes. psychics? Okay, oh, yes. so it's, she's just yes. fighting her destiny. Yes. And so who are, so so each of the, how many books did you say there are in the, the series? The, the begin, to begin with, I have the, I've started with three. Okay, and so so each of these books revolves around a different couple, a different hero, yes. different heroine? Yes, okay. but the, the precinct is there. Mm -hmm. The books are overall, the arc, overarching name is uh, um, Court of Angels. Oh, I like that. Which is a court at the back of an antique shop um, that has stone angels and griffins and so on. Mm -hmm. And the families live in flats around around the courtyard. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the legend uh, ties into the stone angels and into finding out what the, what the mystery is that they hold. Okay, so so all three separate families, they are all good guys. Oh yeah. And the Embrin are the the enemies. Of they the are the series. enemies. So now yes. are these three families, they're aware of each other. They're they're they're, but they're aware not of related each other. They're, each they're other. not related to each other. Okay. They're aware of each other, but they don't. For instance, in the first book we deal only I only deal with the Malays. In the second book I deal with the um, fortunes in the Malays, mm -hmm. and in the third book it'll be. Uh, the Montrachet's mm -hmm. fortunes and and the legs. Okay, so so your are your heroes always psychic? Are your heroines always psychic? Yes. Do you mix it up, or they're no, they're they, all they, always, they always are. So yes. so none of the protagonist is just a straightforward human with no extra special uh, abilities. I, the the hero in the first book uh, was not aware that of his of, of the talents that he had. Oh, that's interesting. Until they gradually appeared during the story. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, one of the questions as an editor I always have for authors who are writing an ongoing series is how are you going to make each book different from the last? Um, so when you say you have three books and they're all about psychics, people involved in psychic families fighting evil, I'm wondering, well, how is the relationship in book one and the, the characters and personalities in book one going to be different from book two, and how is book two going to be different from book three? Mm -hmm. Can you go into a little I detail about that? I think that uh, they're their actual individual talents make the stories very different. Mm -hmm. Their backgrounds, just as if I were writing three independent books mm -hmm. set in New Orleans, I'd have three sets of people who had different backgrounds mm -hmm. and who had had different life experiences. In the third book, um, it's all about Sykes, who is the who would have been the head of the family had he not been the next person after mm -hmm. 300 years to be born with dark hair and blue eyes. And he is very powerful. 
interesting. And how did you decide to set this series in New Orleans? I've been setting books in New Orleans for um, 15 years. Okay, yes. so it's Many familiar books. territory. Yes. I love that you're you're taking a, a different tack with, with psychics and that you're keeping the romances to, 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 to two people with extra special powers um, rather than what I frequently see in paranormal is, is one human and one extra, one non-human. So I, I like that this is kind of a unique take. Um, I definitely think there's a market for this series. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about it. Are you going to buy it? Contract. I think I'm going to buy it. Oh, I think good. I'm going to buy it right now. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>